Public health orders during a pandemic are um, ac actually necessarily extreme, I think. However, the extreme situation we are living through has allowed space for the dangerous infiltration of the mainstream political conversation by neo-Nazi and other far right-wing groups. So why are conservative commentators not condemning these groups and their violent threats to our democracy? John, you first on that one. Oh, thank you for your question, Sally. Um, <laughs> from my perspective, I see in Victoria over the last two years, Parliament shut down. I see a government that's passed a law today that allows indefinite detention without access to a lawyer at the decree of a public servant. I see police that have shot protesters in the back with rubber bullets. But, John, John I, the I question, to... Sally's question is about the violent okay. threats to our democracy. But I, but what's, I, your, what's your answer but to my, that question? I went to one of the protests a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I saw people who have lost their businesses, who have lost their families, people who have tried to take their own lives. So I think when we're talking about the response to these extreme laws, and I don't share your views that these orders need to be extreme. We need to be able to keep on living. So for me, if you're asking me about the protests... Well, yeah, which is I'm what going Sally's to, asking I'm going to let's first come to that. say, let's put that in the context of what governments have done to us. At the protests a couple of weeks ago, you know, 100,000 people... Two people, two or three people, brought paper mache gall gallows. I don't think we've got any perspective if we're going to focus on that and we're going to forget what governments have done to us. I think if we're talking in the terms you are, what we're doing is delegitimising legitimate protest responding to the real concerns of hundreds of thousands of Australians. But, John, it, there can be legitimate protests there. But you can also condemn, can't you, the gallows, the nooses, the people saying, I want to see Dan Andrews dangling from a rope, the physical threats to not only him, but the WA Premier, the Northern Territory Chief Minister. All, they're saying oh, they're kids David, are... you absolutely can, and we should, in the same way as we should condemn when Tony Abbott was burned in effigy. But why does when... the qualifier have to be there? Because it's a double standard, David. We should absolutely be focused on extreme elements of the right, extreme elements of the left. But by talking in these terms and focusing on the, the views of a small number of hundreds of thousands of people, I think basically we're gaslighting the Australian mm. public. Narelda, mm. I mean, John is right about not everybody at these protests is a violent extremist. Mm. What, what do you say, though, to, uh, to this question? I feel that we can be here tonight because we're double vaxxed. Uh, we, we had a certain amount of lockdown. Um, we had all of the measures that were put in place, um, advised by the chief health officers of all the states and territories. Um, uh, not so much for you know, the hotel quarantine system, which, which had numerous breaches, um, or the, the vaccine rollout, the initial stages of it. it. It actually took states and territories to kind of grab hold of the vaccine rollout. And, and in some cases, in some places like Western uh, New South Wales, uh, during the outbreak, to go door to door to administer those, those vaccines, it was actually state-run health service providers that ended up doing that, not, not the federal government. So we're enjoying the freedoms that we are enjoying now because of what was done. Well, I don't, I don't know where to start because I have a lot of feelings about this. It's been a, I've been here the whole time with you guys, right here in Melbourne. And being a guest in this country, I tend to, you know, follow what the government tells me. I tend to do it. And I know people are angry. And I know they're not all right-wing extremists. I don't agree with those guys that you're talking about at all. Uh, people are mad. Even on the way here, we, we, we went by, there's still a protest out there in the city. Still a few guys hanging out there yelling, Dictator Dan, Dictator Dan. And I just feel like, I mean, I didn't say it. I think that's a pretty disrespectful way to refer to Warden Andrews. Um, <laughs> you know, he's, he's just trying to do his job. And basically, uh, 
you know, the government screwed up a lot. You, you pointed that out, but I, I agree with Norella that, you know, we, I believe we did went through that because it was like the herd protecting the more, uh, you know, the more susceptible people, and it's sort of like chipping in and do the right thing. It wasn't fun at all. The government tried to make it better. Oh, you know, no international travel, but we'll have a travel bubble between Australia and New Zealand. And, you know, I was impressed. I didn't even know we had that technology. <laughs> but I think I'll still wait and take an airplane. Because <laughs> bubbles are going to take a long time. You, you, ever, you ever see how slow a bubble goes? It takes it's, like an hour to cross a children's birthday party. It's, so, it's, I don't know what to think of the whole thing. It's, it's a mess. Um, I just hope Omicron doesn't have its way. Hugh, uh, <laughs> lockdowns and mandates, particularly around vaccines, they've been really polarising issues, right, uh, yeah, this yeah. year in particular. Do you have any empathy for, for some of those who've been out protesting? Well, I did ABC Breakfast News on Tuesday morning and I drove past the Treasury Building or Parliament House, wherever the protests were, and I saw them. And it, my first thing was I felt really angry about it. I was like, what are you doing? This is just ridiculous. It's just a stupid thing. And then I... I stopped to get a coffee and one of the guys from the protest came and sat really close to me and he looked exhausted and he put his sign down and it, and it wasn't the nicest sign. It wasn't nasty, but it wasn't. And then I said, how are you going? And he said, oh, I'm really exhausted. And, we had a, and I said, how come he's... And, he, and we chatted about why he was exhausted, how, how hard he'd been protesting. And then he said, um, and I haven't... He said, I haven't seen my son in... And he got very teary. He said, I haven't seen my son in a year. And he was really teary. And it just made me realise that... I just feel like we've, there's just been this massive missed opportunity to unite us. Like, there's this foreign threat and we could have all been together wanting the best for each other. And, you know, it was almost competitive between states. Like, I remember thinking, how's New South Wales got their numbers down? We're doing... We've done this for ages and yeah. mm. we should be saying, that's amazing, good on New South Wales and, well, you know, amazing Western Australia, well done to them and, and they should be cheering us on, on. But I just feel like we've been divided. And I think, I think what we needed was a really strong leader and I'm not pointing the finger at Scott. Well, maybe I am, but... <laughs> But some, to, to just a strong leader, to, to you know, to a charismatic strong leader to to, to really unite us and, and to get us together and say, hey, we're in this together, because we are. But unfortunately, mm. we've been divided, and I think it's just a huge missed opportunity.